Hey YouTube, Maddie's 8012, Team JMT, coming to you guys with another understanding stun. And in this one, I'm going to talk about draw power. Now, draw power is exactly what it sounds like. Draw power is your ability to draw additional cards and to be able to sink into your deck a little bit further to find those combo pieces that you need in order to make your play. Now, as a stun player, you don't always look for those combo pieces. What you're really looking to do is to find the pieces to help make an unbreakable board. You want to put together a board that your opponent really, really has to work to get past. And pot of duality and other stuff like that is what has given us that ability uh, as of late. Uh, pot of duality has been a great card since its release. Um, Gravekeepers capitalized with it. Uh, you know, just every stun deck, uh, heroes, um, Bougians right now are capitalizing with this quite a bit. Uh, I mean, just so many, so many anti-meta decks, uh, you know, have capitalized with it. It's been a staple in my uh, chaos stun decks uh, because I like to summon my one monster and set behind it and let it be a let it be a good standalone monster like a Doom Cow or a Thunder King or or something along those lines. And Pot of Duality allows me to to make those kind of plays because I can search for the monster that I need or the trap that I need off of the top three cards and um, help to create that unbreakable board. Now, the one issue that I have with Pot of Duality is that it doesn't allow you to special summon after you've played it or you're not allowed to special summon the turn that you play, uh, Pot of Duality. Uh, however, it does add some great consistency to what we're trying to do, and as a stun player, as a control player, consistency is what you need the most. However, if you are playing a deck, something like Evil Swarm, where the control and the unbreakable board that you put together is dependent on special summoning a monster, something like Ophion or Bahamut or, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, the... The Fire Fist Tiger King, or maybe maybe you're playing Chaos Stun and you need the Black Luster Soldier or the Chaos Sorcerer. Um, Pot of Duality doesn't help you out too awful much when you need to make these kind of cards. When you need to put these kind of cards on board, Pot of Duality does nothing but, but keep you from being able to make them. So, what other options do we have if you're running a deck where you need to special summon, but you also want to be able to play stun? You also want to be able to slow your opponent down with, with your boss monsters. Uh, if you guys have been following me here recently, you'll know that at the ARG event in Columbus, I played Triple Upstart Goblin in my Evil Swarm deck. Upstart Goblin put in so much work for me. Upstart Goblin was so good. It made the deck so much more consistent. Uh, what it did the most for me, though, is it allowed me to make Ophion out of nearly every hand that I didn't already have the ability to make Ophion. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the uh, actual percentage that I had was after adding in the Upstart Goblins, the triple Upstart Goblins, and the one uh, Allure Darkness into the deck, I was able to make Ophion something like 76% of the time out of my opening hand, which is really, really good, guys. Uh, Ophion puts together such a dominant board uh, that uh, being able to open him is so good. Uh, Upstart Goblin allows me to do that. However, like Upstart, uh, like Pot of Duality, Upstart Goblin does have that small little drawback. With Pot of Duality, you can't special summon. Upstart Goblin gives your opponent that extra thousand points. So that's been a big, a big drawback to why people haven't been wanting to play Upstart Goblin, even though it's been out uh, much, much longer than what Pot of Duality has. So why is it that Upstart Goblin is good enough now? You see. 
Stun has always been kind of a make one monster and set behind it game. You you play a very a very slow pace, a very controlled pace. Well, when you're setting out just the one monster, majority of the time being like a Thunder King or a Doom Cow or maybe a Kaiku, if you're playing Chaos Stun, or maybe it's something like uh, Bujin Yamato, uh, Yamato if you're playing uh, uh, you know Bujins now. Um, you really only need that one monster, but you're really only putting in a little bit of damage. The reason I feel comfortable with, uh, with Upstart Goblin now in the meta, in my Evil Swarm deck, is because Ophion's attack is 2550. His body is big enough at 2550 to put in some work, to put in some damage, that allows me the... Uh, the uh, the freedom to give my opponent an extra thousand or two thousand points a game because I know I can make it back off of one hit of Ophion. So if this card gives me Ophion, Ophion can then give me back what I've already, you know, help me earn back what I've already given my opponent in life points. So there you go, guys. Uh, the one last thing that I would like to point out is that draw power adds so much consistent, consistency to the deck, and that is what you need the most out of your stun deck, out of your anti-meta deck. Consistency is very, very high on, on, on the priority list of what you need to fit into your deck. Um, being able to make your play, being able to make your boss monster, being able to put your opponent in the situation where he really has to contemplate what he's going to do and really have to put work in to get past what you've built. That is huge in this game right now, and that's where this stuff you know should take you. So there you go, guys. There's my out my outlook on what you need as far as draw power. Uh, like always, I appreciate it. Subscribe, comment down below, and show us how much you love us.